In Battlefield 2, the commander role is one of the most influential positions that you can find yourself in, and as commander you'll often decide whether your team wins or loses. The role consists of five primary tools and you have lots of secondary tools available to you that essentially give you power to control the battlefield and assist your team with offensive, defensive and utility based assets. This video is going to be a thorough guide to commanding in BF2 and will tell you literally everything you need to know about the role and how to be the best commander that you can be and assist your team to victory. So before we jump into gameplay and how to actually play as the commander, I quickly wanted to go over some meta concepts of the commander role and what you need to be considering in order to achieve victory. Now these points serve as a sort of framework for how you should be thinking about commanding and are not necessarily direct tips related to maps and that kind of thing. And I do really want to go through them quickly because I know videos can be very boring with lots of people talking and not much practical action. Uh, so I'll try and get through them as quickly as possible. Now for some of you, this might be really obvious stuff, but for newer players, keep this stuff in mind because at the end of the day, Battlefield 2, you can play it however you want, but if you're a commander, you're pretty much playing to win, right? You want the double points, you want the prestige associated with leading your team to victory, blah, 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 whatever else. It feels really good sometimes, you know, when you pull a victory out of the bag by just commanding really well and telling everyone what to do. Anyway, the first point is use all tools available to you in order to secure victory. So you have, as I said, five primary tools. You have your scan, you have supplies, you have artillery, whatever else. You want to be using all of those as much as possible and wherever possible. So you want to be firing them all down on a regular, regular basis. You don't want to be holding on to anything. There are very few situations where you want to hold on to things. Um, and we'll maybe discuss those a bit later if I get around to it. The second one, information is power. Tell your team what's going on. This is really, really important, guys. Imagine you played Battlefield 2 with hacks, right? And you had information on your minimap of where every single enemy was. You had information on your HUD of every single person's HP and when vehicles were going to spawn and how much ammo everyone has and the average KD of anyone that you're fighting against showed next to the name or whatever. If you had it, all information, you'd be you know, you win this game like every single time pretty much because you'd be able to control the battlefield, right? You, you'd you know exactly what to do in exactly what situation. So what you kind of need to do is leverage the fact that you have a sort of a mini hack um, as a commander role, which means you can spot across the whole field of play, right? You can literally spot any point and show where an enemy is on a map. So you can give everyone on your team a small bit of a map hack, by playing your position correctly and also stuff but like using your microphone so saying to someone hey watch out you know on road to Jalalabad for instance if you've got uh, someone coming in and is going to see for a tank you can say hey you've got a vehicle coming to you because they might not necessarily see it or they're too focused on whatever else so give your team information guys be sure to use your microphone and be sure to use your right click spotted the third one is manage your resources and adapt to the battlefield so depending on which game and on which map you're going to be wanting to focus Focus your management of resources in different areas. For instance, strike a Karkand. Artillery is your friend. You will literally win so many games if you know how to place artillery and you place it well. On other maps, it's going to be about spotting. And on some maps, it's going to completely depend upon who's doing what. So if you've got a really, really good chopper crew, so you've got two people in the chopper, and this happens to me sometimes, and I'm really happy when it happens. You've got two people in a chopper who are really good, really experienced. The gunner knows how to TV and the pilot knows how to fly. Those two people are going to be able to absolutely demolish the game if the enemy doesn't have a good chopper or if the enemy doesn't have good jets because chopper is really really powerful in bf2 and what you're going to basically want to do is control your usage of resources around them so you're going to be wanting to put artillery down on say like the enemy chopper and you're going to be wanting to make sure that you're spotting everything out you're stacking supply drops so they can get ammo and resupplies and everything like that you want to be using those resources and leverage them towards your team strengths sometimes your team strength is going to be in the jets so for instance on wake Island, if you've got a really good F-35 pilot, you're going to be wanting to tell him, you know, attack here. And you can even use attack markers and say, you know, if you've got a group of snipers hanging around near the AA on the north side of the island, you know, just, just do a cheeky MG run here and you're going to get loads of kills. Right, the fourth point is know your victory conditions. So on certain maps, you're going to have different victory conditions, okay? So Wake Island, at, um, what is it? Airfield? Airfield is the victory condition. If US gets airfield, they win. If China keeps airfield, they win. Right? And on maps like... What's that new map? I can't think of what it's called. The new one in 1.5. Newish, anyway. Uh, the new one on 1.5 where the US starts on the right-hand side and China starts on the left and you have the boats and the APCs and that's the only way to get there. 
that is like the victory condition there for China is just to make sure that those flags aren't capped. And if China can do that, they're pretty much going to win. And the UF can caps those flags, then it's, you know, it's anyone's game in that situation. So understand the victory conditions of each map and what you need to be doing in order to secure your victory. And usually like nine times out of 10, that revolves around the management of air resources. So that revolves around making sure that your team has choppers and jets up and the enemy team doesn't have that so much up. All right, fifth and final point, spot and speed, guys. This is really, really important. Right-click spotted, right-click spotted, right-click spotted. You want to be doing that so much as commander that people rage at you because they're so annoyed of hearing the enemy unit spotted, enemy unit spotted, whatever else. You want to make sure that you're speaking as well. So get on your microphone and say, hey, guys, you've got something here. Hey, guys, you've got something there. When you speak to people, it engages them and they're willing to listen. When you're typing it in chat and when you're giving them attack markers, no one's really paying attention. So get on your microphone, tell people what's going on and spot the hell out of the map. So anyway, those are the five sort of key commander concepts and now we're going to go into get some game plan i'm going to talk to you about different elements of the resources that you've got and how to manage the battlefield hopefully that information was useful to you um, i think it's important to consider the sort of meta concepts of commanding and how to actually play the game and what you need to be considering every single time you command okay so let's quickly take a look at the commander resources that we've got available the first one is the scan you should be pretty much using this on cooldown as soon as you've got it available it's pretty low cooldown um so you don't need to worry about you know just spamming it 24 7 so you can see what's going on it provides a sort of heat map of the field and shows you where everything is now after you've done the scan my advice is to spot areas where you're giving your team useful information so high priority targets are going to be stuff like armors apcs um uh, mobile anti-airs those are the things that you're going to be spotting a lot second to that is like infantry and that kind of thing and then third to that stuff that's like in their base that's no one's really paying attention to but again obviously guys this is adaptive so you're going to need to think about what is useful information to your team if you've got someone capping a flag and you've you, you scan and you see an enemy there spot them so that person can see them right um but, but spam spotting the enemy commander when no one's near him and you know whatever else there's no point doing that uh, so make sure you spot in situations where it's important and most of the time the things that you are going to be spotting is going to be important and usually you can tell if something's important if you've got something in your team near there so my general advice is to prioritize spotting targets near high value materials on your team whether that's uh vehicle spawns whether that's really good players or whether that's flags that are going to go neutral or whatever else make sure that you're spotting but use uh, spotting wisely and make sure you're spotting actually useful useful targets to your team um, one thing to note if you do scan and you put down a uav afterwards for you if you are fighting um, it's only going to show the heat maps it's not going to show you like the directional location even though that's what uav would normally show until that heat map sinks it's really annoying and i don't think there's any way to fix it um, but yeah just for something uh, that's something that i'd mention so the second tool that we've got is the artillery. On certain maps, this can be really, really good. Uh, as I was saying before, strike at Karkand. Artillery is really strong. You can make or break games based on how you place your artillery and what you're doing with it. One thing to note about artillery, when it comes down, you've got 15 seconds. So if you're thinking about, say, camping, let's say, say for instance, you kill a J10. Say, say you're on the carrier as commander, you're sitting in the Essex and you kill a J10 that came into rape. What you want to be doing in that situation is waiting 15 seconds. Now, obviously, the spawn time of any player is 15 seconds. So what you can do is you can press tab in that situation. You can see as soon as they respawn, because their name will go from being black to being red. And then you can drop the artillery instantly on the J10 spawn. It's got 15 seconds to come down. 15 seconds plus 15 seconds is 30 seconds, which is the amount of time it takes for the J10 to spawn. You can drop the artillery down. And as soon as they get into that jet, they will be blown up in the jet by artillery. Really useful piece of information there, guys. Make sure that your timing thing things um try and learn as many of the spawn timers as possible and once you get on top of that you'll be able to use artillery a lot more effectively because you're keeping that vehicle down for a lot longer time and you're keeping that player down for a lot longer time uh what else do i need to say about artillery right um so air vehicles are really get damaged by it by their splash damage on it so helicopters and jets really easy to kill with the artillery um, you can direct hit on tanks. I think it happens around maybe, I'd say 10 to 15% of the time you get a direct hit on a tank or an armor and that will instantly blow it up. 
Um, and that's really annoying as someone who likes to whore around in tanks from time to time. Getting directly hit by artillery is really annoying because I get really pissed off by the fact that this tool that I can there's literally no way to counter it, right? All you can do is just drive away and hope that it doesn't get you while you're driving away. Uh, what else do we need to say about artillery? I guess putting it down in high foot traffic areas for the enemy is the main aim of the game, right? So if you want to put it down on the carrier, go ahead and put it down on the carrier. If people get butt hurt and rage, don't listen to them, okay? The aim of the game is to win. And if you think the best place for your artillery is to put it on um, the, the enemy carrier, go ahead and do it because that's going to ensure victory for your team. Uh, sometimes you have situations where your artillery gets blown up and you only have like one or two artillery left. You can still use it, but it reduces the number of attacks that come down. Isn't great, so usually we want to be using, uh, usually we want to repair uh, artillery to make sure that we can get as many hits as possible. Uh, as I say, mo most effective against infantry. So on maps like Master City, Road to Jalalabad, Strike at Karkand, artillery is the bomb, literally. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. Sometimes in really rare situations, I guess it's just a piece of information you should know. Um, you can get hit by artillery, say if you're like in a jet or something, you can get hit by artillery even if you're like 800 feet up in the air because it comes down and it actually has a projectile at that height. It's, it happens very, very rarely. It's very uncommon, but yeah, it, it has happened before to me. And there's nothing quite like getting killed by artillery while you're flying, you know, 600 meters in the air in a jet. So the fourth tool available to you is the supply drop. The supply drops are mainly used in situations, again, on city maps where you've got armor and you want to be putting them down sort of behind your armor um, and making sure that you can repair them up, essentially. And usually you want to be placing it in a position where the enemy can't shoot it, right? So don't put it in, so, so don't put the supply crate between the armor and the enemy. You want to be putting it behind um, to make sure that they can use the body of whatever vehicle they're in in order to stop them getting killed. Note that the supply crates do stack. So if you have three or four supply crates on top of you, you will be healed and you will be repaired for four times the normal amount of a supply crate. It does have a life time. Um, it does have also a health bar and you can actually repair it up. If you're an engineer and you're able to repair supply crates, I don't think I've ever done it. I don't think it's very useful. Um, but it's just something to uh, to pay attention to. Supplies crates can also be used to kill enemies. The drop area of the supply crate is about five meters to the north. It's always to the north, by the way, guys. Five meters to the north of wherever you select it. I don't know why it doesn't drop exactly where you select it to drop, um, and it's a little bit off, but just something to keep in mind. If you've got like a few people waiting for a jet on the enemy team, and there's no one that you can use a supply crate for you at that moment in time, don't be afraid to try and drop that supply crate and squash the people waiting for the jet. Every single death in this game, even if it's an is no more, counts as a ticket. So you're leading your team to victory. And also there is nothing more rage inducing or funny than supply dropping an enemy vehicle whore that just loves to fly around, just loves to kill people. Having a supply crate dropped on your head in that situation is really frustrating. And then if you follow it up with an artillery, it's beautiful. Um, and trust me, getting people raging is one of the best ways to win this game. Uh, I think that's everything we need to know about the supply crates. Yeah, yeah. So the last one, obviously the vehicle drop. Vehicle drops can be used to kill choppers, um, but they can also be used to transport your team from point A to point B. I usually put vehicle drops down when I see like a random person out in the middle of nowhere running towards a flag, which seems like the nice thing to do. Um, some people aren't too familiar with the fact that if you're in a squad, you can request a vehicle drop. When you do get requested vehicle drops, accept them as quickly as possible. And if you don't have a vehicle, tell them that you don't. And then as soon as it's available, drop it. It's really boring running in this game. Everyone wants a vehicle because the maps are so big and walking around and not being able to sprint and whatever else just pisses you off. So get that vehicle down as quickly as possible. I do use vehicle drops on some maps, say like Sharky Peninsula, to try and kill the enemy chopper. And once you get good at it, it's actually, you know, you you have maybe about the same same success rate as artillery. It's called car artillery, by the way, because you're dropping a car on the head and it works like artillery. Uh, and that's the same vein as the supply drops as well. You can drop them on enemy snipers, the vehicles, and, and squash them in the head. And people do get really upset when you do that. So make sure that you're you're leveraging that uh, information and harnessing it as, uh, as well as possible. Is there anything else we need to know about vehicle drops? I don't think so. I think that's everything. I think that's everything about all the assets as well. I can't think of anything I didn't mention. Um, obviously, your assets are retired 
um, to various elements on the map. So artillery has things that can be blown up by spec ops. You can also bomb it as well and TV missile it. Um, it does a bit of damage to them. I don't want to go too in depth about all this information because I think it'll be boring to a lot of people. Um, but you can supply drop on your assets or on your UAV scan trailer and whatever else. That's really useful, so you can repair it up without actually being an engineer. If you're miles away, you can also put a supply drop down, and it will heal it up over time. Um, but also, if you've got, you know, on on, on a map like on a map like um, Strike at Karkin, if the enemy commander goes C4 and then blows up the enemy assets, uh, which this uh, video probably shows to some degree, um, that can be really annoying. So if I'm a commander, sometimes I'm not afraid to just suicide, to just drop that ticket, run over to the enemy base if we've capped their flag, just blow up their assets. And if the enemy commander wants to drop a supply crate, well then I'm just going to get more C4 and just blow up the supply crate as well as the uh, as well as the assets. So yeah, anyway guys, that's the main aspects of the uh, materials and how to use them. And now I guess I'm going to go into some gameplay. Okay guys, so what I figured I'd do is actually jump into a game to kind of show you elements of uh, commanding from like the perspective of someone who really wants to win. So I'm going to try really, really hard to win this game. Um, this is Operation Harvest. We're going to be on the US side. And essentially the uh, main aim of the game here is to try and get mech field base. This part of the map is a really important part of the map because it's where the mech chopper spawns. And if we can get that, we'll uh, we'll be very, very happy. I don't know if I just got accepted for a command. All right, there we go. Um, so at the start of the map, I'm not going to bother putting UAV just down yet because no one needs to know any information yet. I will be putting UAV down here in a second though. Um, I'll also be communicating my squads as the game goes throughout. Uh, we've got the little bird here, so I'm going to go ahead and probably put it over Hilltop Lookout because we've got two two armors rolling in there and it looks pretty strong at the moment. Um, I'm going to do a scan right now and what I'm trying to look for is just to see whether when the map's busy and where it's not busy and also the chopper is really important here. So I'm going to spot the chopper here. So is that the that's the little bird? Okay, and there's the attack chopper. Uh, the hitbox of the chopper is a little bit behind where the helicopter is. You see, I can actually spot here, and it shows where the chopper is. Um, but if I spot kind of a little bit in front of it, I'll have to show you on the other one. It doesn't work so well. So usually you want to trail it a little bit. We did really well here to get these points. You don't need to get mech field base to win, but it's usually generally pretty preferable. You can win definitely with it. Um, we stopped the bleed right now, which is really good. Uh, oh, no, we haven't actually. Okay, so this map isn't... Um, you have to have a majority in order to get the bleed here. So I think if we cap this one, maybe it'll be even. Or maybe it's four to three. I don't know. Maps differ uh, depending on various different elements. All right, so I just got a good artillery off there. I got three people with the artillery. I'm going to go ahead and scan. I've got a vehicle drop available, but I don't think anyone needs a vehicle. Maybe if I saw someone here, I'd give them a vehicle. I mean, this guy, there's a vehicle there. I think here they've got vehicles as well. Yeah, there's a vehicle there, so I don't really need to be putting vehicles down. What I do need to do is keep the UAV up. This is really busy at the moment. There's not too much that the team can do. So this guy's going to go over to the, uh, the grain elevator right now. Um, and if he can back out, that's pretty useful. Uh, the problem is he's probably going to get attack choppers straight away. But I'll spot on that flag just to show him that it's clear. And then I'll spot over here to let him know that the chopper's going to be up. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so there's their commander. You see how he's sitting here? What I'm going to try and do is... Because we don't need this vehicle right now, I'm going to try and vehicle drop him. And hopefully I can kill him. Let's have a look. We should see there's no more here if it kills him. Okay, it didn't. But it flipped, which means it should blow up and that should kill him. Um, I need to be putting UAV down, but I just want to see whether this actually works. Okay, that's good. Someone else shot at it, so they got the <laughs> they got the team kill. All right, that's what you want. That's that's how you win games. All right, so we got we got the bleed off right now, which is useful. Uh, I'm gonna let everyone know we got grain elevator. So what's on the chat? We've only got a few squads at the moment, though. This is a pretty dead server in terms of squad play. I mean, we've got almost full people. Um, in the server and no one's really uh, no one's really squatting up. Maybe I'll tell people to squat up, what do you reckon? Look at all these unassigned people. Look at all this. Look at all, look at all these people who are unassigned. I guess some of them haven't even spawned in yet. But for those people who have spawned in, you need to be in squads. You know? It's not fair not being in squads. Uh, let's go ahead and actually play the game instead of bitching. 
So what I'm going to do is scan and take a look what's going on. Now usually before I scan, I tell people that I'm going to scan to let them know that there's a there's a situation a brewing. This is really good for us right now. I'm going to put a UAV down, even though we got the little bird, just so we can kind of try and help the the chopper here. This is a really important vehicle drop if I can get it off. All right, he killed it, so we don't need to do that. This F7, F7 Gen Chrono is a pretty good player. Um, so he usually knows what he's doing. And if we can get this field base, we should definitely win this game. I'm going to go ahead and spot a grain elevator. I'm going to also let the large pro uh, produce farm guy know that uh, uh, there's someone around him. Okay, sorry, at the moment it's a bit hard for me to think straight because I've got that horrible artillery noise glitch that happens sometimes. Uh, I'm going to run away. Oh, one thing you can do, guys, if you like, really care about stats and stuff, you can sit inside a vehicle and that will give you the stats of the vehicle. Especially if you like drop artillery on someone as well, it will give you the kills if you want to like try and make your KDA look really, really good. So what I'm going to do is just, I doubt anyone's going to be using this AA now that we've got mech field pace, so I'm just going to just go and chill in this for a little bit and pad my stats. Uh, I'm going to spot here for the chopper, also here as well, because I'm going to kind of get this flag and the armor's going in there. We've got one more grain elevator as well. Uh, I'm going to tell the squad's good work for, for capping that fight. Good work on capping the uh, field base, guys. Looks like we're going to win this one. Uh, so you see in the top right-hand corner there that the, the points are actually not... Okay, now they are. Okay, so the bleed for this one is you need to have them down to one flag which is pretty unfair that the US can have one flag and the bleed doesn't stop but when we have when they have one flag it does Is there any on grain elevator? I just got asked if anyone's on grain elevator so I'm gonna spot yeah you got a couple on grain elevator I'm spotting right now I dropped artillery on large produce farm because it went neutral hopefully this APC nah he's gonna be too far away for that APC to kill him uh, grain elevator went neutral, so it's good that that guy asked. I should have probably spotted that anyway. So that was my bad, but he asked. Okay, that's fine that they're going to get that, because we're just going to kill him and then recap the flag, aren't we? So the squad 3 needs to know about this guy here. But I think he's in second... No, he's dead. That's good. Uh, what do I want to put UAV? I want to put UAV on grain elevator. I could have put it on checkpoint, but I think, I think grain elevator is pretty good. Um... If I really wanted to fight at the same time here, I'd probably jump in that tank right now. Um, and then go and run towards Large Produce Farm, but it looks pretty busy. I think our attack chopper just suicided, which isn't too great. So we haven't cleared up everything here. Uh, have we got a situation where I can vehicle drop? Yeah, so this is an example where you will vehicle drop. I think that guy's probably just some sniper, though. He's not really doing much for the team. Well, he would. Oh, no, he's a medic. That's good. Good work, dude. I'm going to spot around Hilltop. And then spot on checkpoint. Okay, someone just got killed. You didn't hear that little laugh? That happens when you kill someone. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to have sound on this. Sound might be off. We'll see. Scans up. Let's have a look what's going on. So this side's all clear. I'm going to tell the squads in a second that that's all clear. Okay, guys. The north side of the river is completely clear. There was no one on the north side anymore. I'm dropping supply crates on that bridge so you guys can cross it if you want to. Uh, supplies will also repair bridges. Uh, I think they can take this one, but I think they're all on this track, so I want to kind of keep them on there. Should repair that bridge. Should. You can also do it by proxy in their vehicle, so these guys, if one of them is engineer, will start repairing that. I'll spot at Hilltop, even though no one's heading towards there, just to let people know that if they wanted to go there, it's not too busy. Um... Let's have a look if this guy needs a vehicle drop. Oh, I gave him a vehicle drop before, so I don't know what he's doing now. Maybe these two guys? They just seem to be in the middle of nowhere. Literally pointless being snipers here. They're miles away from there. Look how far away they are from the action. I mean, unless they're trying to do some sort of, like, wookie, you know, fucking sniper esports long-range compilation. It's a pretty pointless spot to be at. On for, oh no, it's good they can be here for the car. Did he die? I think he just died, didn't he? Uh, we got a squad at Grain Elevator, guys. Uh, squad 4 and Squad 6, can you spawn there, please? I'm going to give you UAV. Tanks up, so you may need AT. Man, I've got that artillery glitch again. Oh, it's so ugly. 
So I'm gonna move up right now to. Uh, oops, said that the wrong thing. I'm gonna move up right now to um, to avoid me clearing that artillery again. So squad four and squad six. I think they spawn and they just got killed. Uh, it's not the end of the world. We're still doing really well in tickets. We'll probably win this game pretty comfortably, I think. All right, I'm gonna start spawning. Uh, they got snipers. Snipe, by the way, snipers are completely useless in this game. Never, never pick the sniper kit. It's the most useless kit in the game. Literally the most useless kit, especially on a map like this. Like you'll maybe take maybe three or four tickets, and if you do kill some, if you do get a shot on someone and they get revived, it doesn't count as a ticket. So it's useless, completely useless roll. I'm gonna artillery on mech scout here because I kind of want to stop that from being capped. Hopefully the artillery takes care of it. I've still got that artillery going off. I'm going to have to move up even more. That's so horrible listening to that. Battlefield is just like the loudest game ever. So, obviously in this situation, this artillery keeps them off of mech scout post for a little bit. But I could have put it on checkpoint barn door and got on a lot more kills. Maybe that would have been the better thing to do. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it would have been the better thing to do. But I think having both of those flags and having that APC up is pretty useful. But maybe, maybe not worth five tickets. We'll see. I don't even see anyone on there. Right, and a spot there. Spot here as well. Just to make sure that's clear. All right, got the scanner. Vehicle and uh, supplies are available. Squad two, I'm going to put it on you. So yeah, if I didn't artillery here, they'd have all of this side now, which would be pretty dangerous of us just having mech airfield. So I'm actually pretty happy with that artillery. Now I'm going to put artillery on this checkpoint barn door because I want us to have definitely secure this side of the map. If we can secure this side on the map, I think we'll be in a pretty pretty good position to take the rest of the game. Man, that artillery just will not shut up. Ugh. Alright, so let's have a look who's doing really well. Rusty Rib's doing well. That Chrono guy's doing well. Sergeant Slaughter NZ's doing pretty well. I'm gonna move up. Let's have a little scan, see what's going on. Oh, that's right near me. Oh, it's a useless sniper. So let's go kill him, shall we? That's pretty good. I spotted it before the scan went off so I can see where he is instead of it being heat mapped. Oh, I think that guy's gonna kill him before I do. Let me spot him again. Oh, and they're going to cap it, maybe? Yep, that sucks. That was pretty laggy. Um, I have a very high ping on this server. I have a 250 ping, which means shooting is, is pretty hard. It's pretty hard. Um, I don't know what the situation is there at the moment, so I'm just going to... I'm going to put artillery down regardless, because I don't think there's anywhere else that's useful to put it at the moment. I will spot up mech field, because I just saw that there's an armor there. Maybe I should have put artillery down on here. Maybe it wouldn't make a difference, who knows? Okay, it didn't make it wouldn't have made a difference. That's good, that's good, that's good. Right. So we need to make sure we keep this. Uh, there's a armor and infantry at Mechfield base. I'd really like to keep that flag, guys, if you can head up there potentially. Squad five in the attack chopper, go towards Mech Airfield base, please. I'm gonna give you UAV. Now I'm gonna spot around grain elevator, because we've got an infantry there. And also just spot here in case someone's on the AA. I think there's an AA here, isn't there? On this map? Is that an AA? I don't know. Maybe not. Um, looks like they're going to get that airfield that field base. Artillery probably wouldn't have helped there because I would have put it down at the wrong time. But I think... I have faith in my team. This artillery should help us because they haven't, they haven't neutralized the flag yet. So they're going to still want to be around there for a little bit. I'm going to spot, even though UAV is up soon. Alright, so hopefully this artillery could be really used. It could be really strong artillery here. We'll see how we do. Oh, that's looking like a good artillery. If we can get an artillery shot here, that's exactly what we wanted. Alright, so now it's just the armor left there. Armor at Mechfield base, guys. That's the only guy left. Ah, uh, it looks like they had... Maybe there was a squad. I don't know. But we, we, we did the best we could. We did the best we could. I'm not, I'm not going to complain too much. Maybe this guy can get dairy farm. We're really heavy on infantry around grain elevator. Uh, where do I want to put UAV? This is a tough one. Maybe right here and then I'll just spot around here. A uh, little bird died. That's not great. Are these guys going to be able to keep the pressure on here? Maybe. Artillery coming down on mech it, uh, field base. We'll try and take out those tanks. 
So, as I said in the other section of this video, it's really hard to take out tanks with artillery, especially when they're moving away from the artillery shots mark. Maybe they'll move back. Maybe we'll get lucky. Come on. Please. Oh, we got one. Can we got another one? Nope. Alright, one's, one's good, one's good. But no one else is there, so it's not... not doesn't make that much of a difference in the uh, overall sense of things. I can spot for you, buddy. Just ask me to UAV. Don't ask me to UAV for you. You got AA at Mechfield Base, Choppers. Uh, does anyone need a vehicle drop? Maybe they need a vehicle drop here. But I'm not going to because if I drop a vehicle there, it will give away to these guys where he is. They probably won't kill him because like, this isn't... This isn't exactly a competitive game, so I'm not revealing too much information, but I don't think you need it at the moment, so I'm not gonna not gonna bother. I'm gonna put down artillery here because I'm a little bit worried about us losing this point. And then I'm gonna put UAV over both of these points to show kinda show nah, it didn't reach that far. Squad two have hopefully got some information there, but it's just on the just on the, the lisp. I should have put it I should have put the UAV here, because this infantry isn't isn't all that important to um, to cover. Uh, I'll put supply crates down on this tank here because I think he's going to be sieging here. Vehicle drop still, still nothing I can really do with it. So maybe if I can find their commander, I think that might be their commander. He's in the, he's going to get in the, gonna get in the armor. Okay, so that's, I think that puts them, yeah, okay, that does put them on bleed. So you, so two flags is bleed, two flags is bleed. I was mistaken before. It's not one flag. How are we doing in kills at the moment? 136 to 78. Yeah, that's pretty good in kills. Pretty comfortable win for us. Now I'm going to put this vehicle drop down here and hopefully those snipers will want to pick a decent kit. Uh, I'm going to spot for this guy just as a token effort to show him that I care about him trying to back up. But I don't think he's going to be able to do all that much. Let's see what he does. Hopefully. I don't know if he blew that up. Maybe he blew that up. I think he's going to get dumpstered now, though. Still off spot. He's still able to keep alive this far. With all the, uh, all the shizners that he's got going on down there. I'll pop supply crate down on these two tanks, because they're going to engage this tank here. I should have put it forward a little bit, but, I mean, you know, no, no one's perfect. It doesn't make too much of a difference. <laughs> doesn't make too much of a difference. Oh man, this guy's still alive? What a absolute savage. They must stack up, yeah, they UAV and I, maybe their scan's down. Where's the scan here? Is it up here? Nope, I don't know where it is. All right, scan's up, let's have a look. What's going on? So this bottom side's clear. This is really nice when this is clear, so we don't have to worry about this part. And I'm gonna pop UAV right in the middle there. And I'm gonna put artillery right there as well. We've got some infantry there. Hmm, maybe would have been better here. I should have zoomed in first. But again, not perfect. It doesn't matter too much. We're definitely going to win this game. So being overly efficient when you're uh, when you're trying to win isn't isn't the best way to play this game because you just get burnout. I move up a little bit here because I'm so confident that we're going to win that I'm going to go ahead and and start killing some stuff potentially. It seems like they've got, oh yeah, they've got the chopper up as well, so I'm kind of useful in the AA. I mean, remember, no one else is really going to spawn down here and, and pick up the AA. Um, so, it's not like I'm stealing a vehicle. And sometimes, you know, on like certain maps, I'm happy to um, I'm happy to take vehicles and command at the same time. You'll get kind of butt hurt, but then when you finish the game with like 40 kills and, you know, you single-handedly just carry the team with like 100 kills. Uh, combined with artillery on something like... Um, you know, strike at Karkins. Uh, they can, they can suck a fat one, can't they? Um, I've still got a vehicle drop request here. Uh, vehicle's up in maybe 10 seconds. Vehicle on you. So let's head up. Maybe we'll find the, uh, the chopper. We've got an armor over here. I just have to watch out for that. He's not really dangerous because I don't think he can really achieve much where he is. Maybe he could go down a checkpoint, but I don't think I don't think he's going to bother. I don't think that's uh, that's worth it. That's in his best interest, right? I'm going to move over towards this armor now to help kind of repair it up. I'll also try and tank a shot. I didn't get across quick enough. 
Did they kill each other? Yeah, they killed each other. That's a bit of bad luck. Alright, scans up. Let's have a look at what's going on. Yeah, if I could have got between him and the other guy, then I would have been able to uh, tank a shot. I'm going to put the UAV more central here instead of over this one as well. And hopefully these guys, if I can actually spot, we'll get the spot off. Yeah, it's a useless sniper, so we're not too, uh, not too bothered. I think that guy got killed by like a landmine or C4 or something, so I have to just be careful with that. Again, guys, I have really bad ping, so you're going to see me like not get kills and be like, oh my god, this guy's really bad, but I am I promise you I'm not bad, it's just uh, 250 ping is, is not fun at all. I'm going to backtrack here to kind of give myself some space and just pin them down with covering fire, so to speak. Uh, but now I need to jump in the commander screen so I can tell my, because I've got all my resources up and it's no good me fighting if, uh, if I've got all my resources up. I just want to make sure I'm still alive. I could ID here, but I think here's a better position. I'm a truck supply down there as well. Uh, I think that guy's locked onto me. Yeah. Oh, and he's. That was a really lucky shot on that guy. Nice sort of chopper here. I'm going to wait for him to flare and then I'll, uh, I'll chuck up my AA. Alright, now what I could do here if I had artillery instead of wasting it. Is uh, I could truck down artillery on that uh, on that chopper spawn as soon as it comes up. I don't that, that chopper isn't that great though, so I'm not gonna uh, I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm gonna truck down UAV right in front of us. That guy's still still trying to give us some uh, try to give us some aggro. We're in a relatively okay position. Ignore me. I need to run here. Ah! Man, that guy wants my dick. Oh my god, he's still locked on? Alright, we're good. Uh, scans up. Artillery here. I think that's a really good artillery spot. I'm going to put the supply crate over there and I'm going to go and join those guys. I'll put a vehicle drop here as well for that guy just sitting in the middle of nowhere. I've done pretty well with the AA so far moving up. I think killing that, killing those two choppers was st um, strategically useful. Oh, look at that artillery. Racking up the kills. See if we can get another two shots down. Maybe get a number two kills. I'm going to go and sit on this uh, supply crate so I can get in the commander screen without carrying too much. That was a pretty big hook. Okay, he got killed. We've got the UAV here on the little bird, so I'm going to go ahead and put the UAV here. I think, where are they? They're over here somewhere. I'm also going to spot in the main window so I get a sense of where they are. Okay, I need to take out this chopper. I think I'm not going to be able to get a good angle on it though. Alright, I got the kill on him. This could be a Jihad. It's not though. Alright, that's what we want guys, that's what we want. Let's have a look at the scan. Uh, maybe I could have spotted for squad one there if I wasn't fighting, but... He should have asked for it, he knows he can ask for it and I'll give it to him. So that's his fault. We did really well this game guys. We did really, really well, really decisive victory, you know, almost double their tickets uh, in terms of losses, or half their tickets in terms of losses. Uh, I should have jumped out then as soon as I saw that going off. Shouldn't have died then, that was kind of a silly death, should have realised what was going on. It's really actually fucking hard to talk about what you're thinking about while you're playing. Just need to get better at the game. Alright, um, so yeah guys, there you go, there's a commanding victory and how to control the battlefield and that was 22 minutes of commander play with the best battlefield 2 player in the world so hope you enjoyed it and have a good have a nice life hopefully in the the next episode of this you'll uh, you'll get some more information i don't, I don't know what the next episode is going to be on but uh but yeah certainly watch out for that because i know you're going to love it you're going to enjoy it Command is a little bit boring, and once I start getting into, you know, the uh, the nitty gritty of Battlefield 2, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun, guys. So uh, peace out. Talk to you later.